On March 12, the price of Ethereum totally collapsed. This caused a catastrophic failure in the DAI ecosystem, causing many people to lose money. At that time, many people asked, is it the end of DeFi? Well, if you look at the DeFi Pulse, you can see clearly that it's not the case. DeFi is like blockchain. It just never dies and always comes back stronger. If you are a blockchain developer, you need to focus on DeFi because that's clearly what's driving the usage of blockchain applications. And that's where the job market is the most active. So DeFi is active, but maybe too active. You have all these projects popping up every week. How can you keep up? Well, the key is that you don't have to know them all. You only need to be focused on the project that really matter. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the 75 project that matter the most. You absolutely have to know about this project as a blockchain developer. So listen up. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel in the blogs, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. Finance is all about managing assets. In Ethereum, we have ERC20 tokens and Ether. The problem with these assets is that they are very volatile. One day Ether is worth $200, the next day $220, it changes all the time. Can you imagine if you were paid in Ether? Just like you're gambling all you pay on the stock market. We cannot build a financial system with the shaky foundation. What we need to rely on is a stable crypto asset. Enter the wonderful world of the DAI token. DAI is a stable coin. It always keeps the same value. One DAI equals one Ether. It secures its value by locking a basket of crypto collaterals in a spot contract. Collateral assets can be a mix of Ether and other ERC20 tokens. The total value of these collaterals has to always be 150% of the value of the DAI created, otherwise DAI tokens are destroyed in order to keep the system over collateralized. One key aspect of this infrastructure is oracles that help to fit the prices of different collateral assets into the DAI system. Another important piece is what we call keepers. Keepers make sure that the DAI ecosystem have enough collateral to secure the value of DAI. As a developer, you don't need to understand in detail how DAI works under the hood. You only need to understand that DAI is an ERC20 token and can be manipulated like any other ERC20 token. I have another video that explains how to interact with DAI on my channel. So once we have a stable asset like DAI, the next step is to be able to use it for trading. On the blockchain for trading, we have decentralized exchanges. Decentralized exchanges allow you to trade Ether and ERC20 tokens in a decentralized way by using a smart contract. After the first ICOs and ERC20 token, we quickly saw the first decentralized exchanges appearing, like Ether Delta or IDEX. These exchanges worked by matching directly buyers with sellers. However, on decentralized exchanges, one of the biggest problems is low liquidity. And a famous DeFi project that tackled this problem of liquidity is Uniswap. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange for ERC20 tokens. At the time of recording this video, Uniswap is the most popular decentralized exchange in DeFi. Uniswap is not the first decentralized exchange, but what makes it really special compared to its competitor is that it introduced the idea of liquidity pools. Liquidity pools are organized in pairs of ERC20 tokens, for example, token A against token B. With liquidity pools, you have two categories of users, liquidity providers and traders. Liquidity providers send an equal value of two ERC20 tokens. They can withdraw their tokens whenever they want and they also earn some fees as a reward for providing liquidity. Traders can trade directly against the tokens of this liquidity pool. The price of tokens is determined algorithmically by the spot contract of Uniswap. When one side of the liquidity pool is depleted, 
the price moves in a direction to incentivize liquidity providers to replenish the liquidity pool. The system balances itself. A lot of DeFi projects are built on top of Uniswap. If you need to buy or sell ES20 tokens, look no further than Uniswap. Trading tokens is only one part of the equation. Another very important need in finance is lending and borrowing. If you have assets, you want to invest them and get some return. Lending your assets is a great way to do that. And if you don't have assets, you can still participate in the financial system by borrowing assets from other people. In the world of traditional finance, if you want to borrow money, you need to prove your credit worthiness. That's a long and complex process, and we really can't do this on the blockchain. We need a way to lend and borrow crypto assets on the blockchain in a secure way. And for that, we have Compound. Compound is a lending platform. It allows you to borrow and lend ERC20 tokens on the blockchain. At the time of recording this video, Compound is the most popular lending protocol in DeFi. On Compound, loans are secured by collateral. If you want to borrow anything, you need to first provide a collateral like an ERC20 or some Ether. When the value of your collateral goes below a certain threshold, you need to add new collateral. If you don't do it, your loan is liquidated and your collateral is seized. Like for Uniswap, Compound uses a liquidity pool where you have liquidity providers and traders. So you don't borrow and lend directly from other traders. You borrow and lend against the liquidity pool. If your DeFi project manages some ERC20 tokens or some Ether and you want to earn some interest on them, Compound is a great solution. So far, the DeFi project I mentioned provides valuable but simple functionalities. However, there are some investors that have some more sophisticated needs. Is there any DeFi project that offers some more advanced trading features? Yes, and for that, I will introduce DYDX. DYDX is a decentralized exchange for ERC20 tokens. What makes DYDX special is that you can do leverage trading. For example, if you want to take a long position on 10 Ether, but you just have one Ether available, you can. In this case, the Ether you invest will be considered a collateral. However, if the market moves in the wrong direction, your position can be liquidated very quickly. In that case, you can lose all your money. So you gotta be really careful with that. DYDX has also a lending platform that works similarly to Compound. And as you can see, it has an advanced trading interface, way more sophisticated than other DeFi projects. DYDX is a good example of an advanced DeFi project and is regarded as the leader of on-chain derivatives in DeFi. However, if you want to do margin trading or get a loan, you need to provide a collateral. In the role of traditional finance, it's possible to get a loan without a collateral. How about in DeFi? Can we get a loan without a collateral? Yes, we can. And it's a feature provided by another DeFi project called Aave. Aave was initially called Ethland. Ethland was a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform on Ethereum. The initial idea of Ethland didn't get enough traction and they decided to pivot to create it Aave. Aave is also a lending platform. However, one thing that makes Aave unique is that in addition to variable interest rates, they also provide fixed interest rates. But the main thing they are known for is flash loans. Flash loans allow you to borrow as many tokens as you want without providing any collateral. The trick is that you need to pay back the loan in the same transaction. If you don't, the whole transaction fails. This has some really cool applications, like swapping the collateral of the loan on Compound. Unfortunately, this was also used for bad reasons, like the hack that happened on the BZX protocol. Flash loans are cool, but they are still very experimental, so you need to be careful with them. So far, we've talked about what's happening in the blockchain, but users of DeFi projects don't interact with a smart contract directly. They need easy to use web or mobile applications. This leads us to the next project in this list, Argent. Argent is a modern wallet for Ethereum. With the Argent mobile app, you can send and receive ERC20 tokens, including the tokens that you use in various DeFi applications. 
You can also interact with some DeFi applications. For example, you can invest in Compound with just one click. Ajan is not the first Ethereum wallet, but it improves a lot the UX of decentralized applications and make it way more simple to interact with DeFi. If you are interested in how Argent works, it's actually what we call a smart wallet and I have another video where I talk about smart wallets in more detail. Argent is a good first step in improving the UX of decentralized applications. But a part of its integration with Compound, what you can do with DeFi project is pretty limited. Is there anything more powerful? Often end users interact with several DeFi protocols and it's a bit annoying to have to use all the different UIs of these DeFi projects. It's like when you have to use the UI of your stockbroker to trade stocks, then you have to use the UI of your bank to move money. It's not really ideal. And solution to this problem is our next project, Instadap. Instadap is an all-in-one user interface for DeFi. In a single screen, you can have a global vision for all your DeFi investments. At the time of recording this video, they have integrated Compound and Uniswap, and they have plans to add even more protocols. You can do some simple actions like borrowing on Compound or more complex action that would otherwise require separate steps, like increasing the leverage of a position. Now you know DeFi projects in each major category. For decentralized exchanges, you know Uniswap. For lending, you know Compound. For derivatives and advanced DeFi, you know DYDX and Aave. For DeFi front-end interfaces, you know Argent and Instadap. There are many other DeFi projects, but a lot of them are either a copycat of the project of this list or not as important. If you want to get started in DeFi, I suggest that you start to get familiar with the project of this list first. And the best way to do this is to check out my playlist on DeFi programming. I'll see you there.